Hi, Colette Florido with CRW Network, and I'm here at the Florida Medical Cannabis Conference, and I am here with one of my dearest friends in this cannabis space, Josephine. Josephine has been a speaker, um, has been a mentor, has been an advocate, um, is a, a, a licensed clinician, and is talking to caregivers, to physicians, to hospitals, to hospice, to just about everybody, and you're also talking to the legislatures, right? Yes. So tell us about um, what they need to hear the most. What is it that you're repeating time and time again that, that that's really starting to sink in? Um, so I think the most important shift that I've seen over the past five or six years that I've been working, trying to educate on cannabis therapeutics and the benefits is that this conversation is uh, moving into the light of day. When I first started talking about cannabis therapeutics, um, uh, the hunger for the knowledge was there. But at that point in time, people were, you know, grabbing my hand and pulling me in their office and shutting the door, and we'd have to whisper about it. And here we are, um, you know, the Orlando Marriott World Center, and we're having an entire cannabis conference. Um, what a difference just a few years makes in this what subject. What a difference a few years makes. And it's incredibly comforting, but I do a lot of legislative work because I am in Tallahassee, and there is still a very strong prohibitionist propaganda position. Um, we do have representatives from organizations like Drug Free America who will regularly come up and talk to legislators and their focus is always marijuana as a dangerous drug. And part of my role that I see legislatively is to be there so that I can um, testify after one of these types of testimonies and just to gently remind our lawmakers that we're not talking about kids getting high because they want to have fun. We're not talking about um, people who are just, you know, looking for pot to smoke because they want to get high because the reality is, is the people who want to smoke because they want to get high, they're already doing that. Exactly. They already have access one way or another. Half the country has already opened that up. And you can go to other states where they can recognize that and, and you can go about your day and, and have access to that as an adult. But in this state, we are really limited. And in fact, so so much so, because of course you and I both have this similar story of um, caring for our dads and, and going through this together. And, and as a caregiver and as a, um, a loved one who's trying to help the families, the real challenge is that they are the people that are uneducated, as are the caregivers, as are the, um, you know, it's, it's the patients, the caregivers, and their staff. Yes. So we've got family members that are going into hospitals or into assisted living facilities, and currently yes. there are a lot of places that are not open to even allowing that into their facility or their community. What do we have to, to say to that as far as um, what do you tell them, and then what do you ask those leg or, you know, ask the legislatures to address in that scenario? So I work as an independent contractor providing psychotherapy services to our elders in assisted living facilities outside of the cannabis space because I'm a, a clinical social worker, that's my background. What I'm starting to see more and more now, especially in like assisted living facilities and independent living facilities, which are a little different than nursing homes. Nursing homes still, much of their funding comes from Medicare, Medicaid, federally funded programs. Assisted living facilities and independent living facilities are by and large privately funded organizations. They're private pay. So that changes the equation greatly. 
And now that these facilities that we're reaching out to them and we're providing excellence in education, I have a, a small education company, MMJ Knowledge, and that's my goal is to, uh, you know, create professional development opportunities and educate on really this miraculous plant that is not for everybody. Nothing will work for everybody, but it should be a tool in a physician's toolbox, just like the other tools. So as the education is um, coming forth and they're beginning to understand the value, as our elders are stepping forward, those who can, because we do have voiceless elders that we need to be voices for, and are saying, hey, we want to try something different. We're, we're tired of just everything that we're being pumped full of. That's what we did. That's exactly what we did with my dad. So the facilities are recognizing this and they want to provide this as an option, but especially here in Florida, the way our current law is written, only a patient or a caregiver designate, which has been designated through the state and has a, a caregiver card, can be in possession of or administer the medication to a patient. That binds the hands of assisted living facilities, independent living facilities. They can't store a patient's medication along with all of their other medications. The nurse can't make rounds and administer. She can administer morphine. She can administer benzodiazepines. There are all of these um, more dangerous drugs, risky drugs, that cause death that they can hold, they can administer, but they can't do this with cannabis. So we're putting these facilities at a grave disadvantage. They can't service. And then, you know, a lot of these facilities have memory care wings for people who have suffered stroke, trauma, you know, Alzheimer's, other types of dementias. We know cannabis is a neuroprotectant. We know, we know it's going to remove, can remove the beta amyloid plaque. Absolutely. The studies are right here from Florida yes. in some instances. Right. We have a lot of those studies right. already in the PubMed and all of the other documentations for us to review. But we have to get that across. So what is the message and what do we do to move this message along? Who do so we talk to? I have given this some thought and I have a potential solution. I would like to see us implement in the state of Florida something that I call an institutional caregiver provision. If we could designate a facility, expand the definition of caregiver, because we already have that language in our law, if we could expand that definition a little further to include an institution as a caregiver, then that would give them an opportunity to have capacity where they can administer to patients. And, you know, so in order... That clears the concerns about losing their federal funds, that clears the... I mean, it just moved things along in a, in a more... Um, and a faster pace, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so one thing that I'm beginning to notice more and more is that not only organizations, but people themselves, they want to operate within the confines of the law. You know, we're, we're kind of a law-abiding type. We really do. Everyone in this room wants to see that happen in the right way yes. so that we can follow the law. Right. But the laws have to be written. Absolutely. They have to be laid out. Yes. So those are the things. That's a brilliant concept because we do need to approach the, the on an industrialized level because the, the institutions have a responsibility. And boy, just imagine how, how much happier 
the, the not only the the residents but also their the families facilities. and the facilities yes. and the the companies that are supplying the the RNs and the um, the assistance that they're going to have a happier community, Absolutely. less pain, yes. more cognitive right. function, um, and, and it's going to make staff's jobs incredibly easier. You're not having to yes right so that's one of the interesting things that I've been noting the more um, the more service I provide in our assisted living facilities a lot of what I'm called in to treat is anxiety agitation impulse control issues increased aggression towards staff so one of the things I do in my biopsychosocial assessment where we take all of a person's needs into consideration is I look at their MAR sheets, their medical sheet. What are the medications that they're taking? Well, the, some of them are taking seven, eight, nine combinations of drugs. Look at the side effects. Increased agitation. That's what we saw happen. Increased aggression. You know, so it's like, you want me to come in and fix a person so that they're more compliant with the policies and procedures and the staff's day can be easier, which is, of course, a, something that's needed. But you're putting me in a position where it's a virtual impossibility because unless we remove some of those prescriptions, the side effects are going to remain. Absolutely. And that was what we were, we did. I mean, I, I don't, con, I, I don't suggest that you do it without talking to your doctor, Absolutely. but man, was that the first thing that, that we tried to approach and we did. Yes. And you see a night and day difference when you do that. Yes. And we, I can remember every one of those medications that we were giving dad and why and what the side effects were after he started using it. Yes. And it all goes back to less is more. Less is more. So if we did need a medication, boy, would it have been nice to then just have that one medication, not 10. So, so cannabis is a botanical medicine like no other. It has pleiotropic properties. It's one medicine that can um, impact a, a number of different conditions at the same time. We don't need one medicine for one condition, a second medicine for a second condition, then a third medicine to counteract the side effects of the first, and then a fourth to counteract the side effects of the second. If we have one beautiful plant that, depending on your belief, is a gift from God, is a gift from Mother Nature herself, why would we not be utilizing this as a first course option, least restrictive, the least impact first? And then if it doesn't work because it won't work for everyone, I get a little frustrated when I hear um, you know, certain advocacy groups saying it's the answer to everything. Nothing is the answer to everything. It's incredibly therapeutic. Traditional medications are of great value. They serve their purpose. Oftentimes, they can be used in concert. And we see when they're used in concert, we can recommend lower doses of opioids, and we could potentially save lives. That is, I mean, is I don't think you have to say anything point? else. I was about to say. I think there's nothing else that needs to be said when you say it like that. Josephine, how can they find more information? How can they find you? Okay, well, I do have a website, www.mmjknowledge.com. I am on Facebook as well. Um, MMJ Knowledge has a Facebook page. I generally update 
my Facebook page um, with information of what's going on legislatively, if we have committee meetings. Um, and my great goal is hopefully some of these healthcare organizations, some of our hospices. I know that it's a very scary subject, but we have to open the conversation. So my greatest wish is that some of these organizations would prioritize this type of education and invite me in. We don't have to start talking to the patients right away. If they want to do a, a, a small, not even, you want me to talk to the board first. You know, your board of directors. Help them understand, help them feel more comfortable. When they do, then we can take it to the staff level. What are your concerns? What are your sticking points? What would you like to see changed in the law that makes you feel more comfortable in providing this option? And then let's take it to the patients. It's, it's a long-term goal. Not mine. Right. Okay, now you see why this is a wonderful, she is my mentor in this space. Um, Josephine it has opened her heart to this industry. She has helped many people like, like myself and our company to really um, make sure that we stay on the right path, that we're doing the right things, that we're helping the right people. And, um, and so I thank you for that. Uh, this is Colette Florido at the Florida Medical Cannabis Con uh, Conference with Josephine Cr uh, Krell, and uh, this is CR World. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Cannabis, brought to you by CR World. To keep up with the latest in CBD and cannabis-related business, be sure to subscribe to our show.